All right, what's cracking, everybody? So just got the package from thehollowgrind.com in the mail. UPS came today, my day before I go back to my job for work. So couldn't have been a better time. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and just jump right into this video because I got a comparison to, to put next to this knife that you're going to see here. This is Heritech Knives. It's the box. Uh, what they give you in the box is obviously your knife. They give you a little bit of OTF, automatic knife oil. Just a shot of it, to see if you like it, I guess. And your microfiber cloth, okay? So nothing special, same old deal, just like most of the manufacturers out there. And the knife that it is, the Cleric 2. This one is the Battle Worn, I believe. Yep, Battle Worn Double Edge, Cleric 2, right there. Okay, I really like the one, I can't remember what company had it, but this was actually polished out. So this is like a metal insert. Just like when they used to put the carbon fiber and stuff like that on them. So this one just made of metal. You can, you can tape off the handle at some point if you don't like how this looks. Because I really don't like how it looks, but we'll let it go for a while. What I'm planning on doing is just sanding it. Get at least the tips nice and highly polished and... You know, maybe it'll accent it and make it look a little bit better. But it's almost like a diamond plate you see in uh, factories and stuff like that. It's a nice touch, believe me. I just don't like the color of it. I thought it was the, the high shine until I actually got it in my hand, but whatever. It doesn't take much to make that, make that look. So I like the trigger mechanism right off the back just because it's on the top and it's on the top side. It's not like right in the middle where most other knife companies are. You know, Benchmade, Gavin Hawk, stuff like that. Peron Excalibur. So I'm glad that they made it a little bit different. I'm also glad to see that there's some ergonomic places for your fingers that are actually done to this handle. Because the other one I have here, that is not a real Microtech, but it's a knockoff of the original Macora 2. The original Microtech Macora 2 was about the... Actually, it was the same size as this. Blade and all. So... I do have a copy of that because it's been long owned of the real one. And I, I seen a knockoff come up and my wife was like, oh, I'm going to buy that for him for Christmas. And she thought she got me a real one. <laughs> didn't realize it was a knockoff. I didn't tell her. I was like, oh, what it, man? 75 bucks, 75 bucks. At least it looks like the real one, you know, for now. But that's the Heritech Cleric 2. Here is the knockoff piece of crap I'm talking about. So... This does bring back memories for some of you guys out there. From a company called Tack Knives. You know, they're about 75 bucks or so. So as you can see, I just wanted to put this out here for size comparison because they're, they're the exact same size as far as length goes. All the way down to the end of the handle. Obviously, your glass breaker is a little longer on this one because this glass breaker is just straight into the aluminum. I really prefer this way better. I like it. I like how the pocket clip sits up. It's got the ball bearing in the pocket clip, so it'll slide out of your pocket. It does have really good grip in the pocket, so it's not just going to fall out. But as you can see what I'm talking about, on this one, on the Microtech model, and like I said, this is a clone. This is not a real Microtech, so I guess I should just say, the, what is this piece of shit called? The TAC. The tack knives, okay, the tack knife switch is on the top of the knife. It's not on the front, in the middle anywhere. This one is actually on the front, up in the top right. So, really cool. The thickness of them is the same. Pocket clip, I'd much rather have this pocket clip than this one. I like how it looks, like how it feels. And like I said, with the ergonomics, you can definitely see that here, here, here. About four areas where it's nicely cut out for your fingers. Uh, the deployment on this thing, we'll talk about this one first since that's what the video is about. The deployment on this is perfect. I mean, it is what it should be. Okay. A very, very nicely done battle-worn double-edged dagger blade. Now the center line of this goes all the way straight to the tip, so it's done very well. 
There's not a lot of movement in this. If you guys remember the Makora 2 from Microtech, you'll know once you get one of these in your hand that it's about the same. No real changes on it as far as the blade being any tighter or anything like that. It's a 4.25 inch blade. As you can see, it's, it's really comfortable in the hand. I really like it. So if you are out, you know, trying to look for one of these and you find it, put it in your hand. You're going to like it. You're going you're gonna to buy it. Trust me. Very nice. So bringing the blade back in. The same. Now this thing fires just like the real Microtech, okay? Difference being on most of the Makora models. The real ones, they had holes drilled into the blade. They had some holes drilled into the blade down here just to kind of represent ant eyes, you know what I mean? So, um, obviously, this blade's a piece of shit. Claimed to be D2, but I highly doubt that. So, we'll do another size comparison here, and you could actually compare the full length. As you can see, they're identical. So, very, very... Nice knife here, everybody. And I'm going to be beating this one, by the way. I'm going to be beating the crap out of this in another video just to see what it takes to break it so that everybody that spends the $420 will know it holds up, hopefully, to what a $75 piece of shit knockoff Chinese model holds up to. So that's what we're going to do with that one. Now that I got this, I just wanted to do a size comparison on all that in the video for it before I went ahead and beat the piss out of it. So I will be making that video coming up shortly. You can see this one's actually got the serial number on it, just like most my or yeah, most Microtechs, because I did finally find one I didn't have a number on. So it does have the serial number on it, the knife company, USA, and you know, all the good stuff we like to see. The stepping on the button is done really well. I like what they did right at the top of it. Instead of putting the X on it, like my custom Microtech and some of my other Microtechs I have, they just went ahead and they put the, the dots on it here, the little cutouts, so that your thumb actually grips it no matter what. But you put your thumb in front of it and pull it. Flawless. You can push it. Okay, and you can also put it right on the top and do the same thing. So, very, very nicely done knife. This is a good carry knife. You know, I mean, it just depends on what state you're in. Be very careful with that because not only is this a big blade, but it is a double-edged blade and it's an automatic. So the stupid-ass cops that think they can protect you 100% of the fucking time out there in the world that don't want you carrying shit like this because they're afraid of the fucking 50s switchblade boys, you know? They like to, they like to put a case on you, fucking assholes. But anyway, man... Most cops are not dicks, but you're going to come across one that's going to fuck you right up over this stupid shit right here. You know, I, I've, I've got folding knives that I can open two times faster than what I can get something like this out of my pocket and open it. And, I mean, the legality bullshit behind all this stuff is absolutely fucking stupid anymore. It's all about getting somebody a damn felony or some kind of charge to keep you from buying a fucking gun. You know, since they can't just ban guns because of your rights, they'll take your fucking rights away just for saying, I'm going to carry my switchblade today. Knowing that if I'm ever going to stab me a motherfucker out of just wanting to do it, I'm going to use the biggest kitchen knife I can find like Michael Myers instead of a $420 freaking badass looking knife, you know. Most people that carry, you never hear about anybody getting shanked at one of these fucking things walking down the street, that's for sure. Hopefully somebody don't do it now that I said it, but <laughs> but you, you don't hear about that shit. You hear about some crazy bastard that found a, a steak knife in the trash out behind Sizzler getting fucking stuck, you know? You never hear about anybody doing that shit with these. Us people that carry $400 to $1,000 knives, we're not going to waste the blade on that kind of shit. You know, unless we really, 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 really have to. All right. It's got to be that situation that that allows it, legally allows it. Right. Even though the knife size isn't going to be legal, period. But getting your ass beat down to the fucking ground in a pulp and uh, losing consciousness in and out of consciousness. I don't give a fuck what the goddamn law says about what I can carry at that point. Some bitch is getting stuck. All right. That's that's basically what I got to say about that. So. 
back to the Heritech home with my rambling shit. Very, very nice knife. It's got the Torx driver screws in it. So you can definitely take it apart, clean it up. You know, you, you rarely have to do anything like that. If you're one of them people that carries it down into the lake with you or, you know, the ocean, you might get some seaweed in it. You might get some sand in it. You know, yeah, okay, shit like that. You're going to want to take it apart and clean it up. But most people that buy these knives will carry it on the street. They'll carry it to the park, you know, shit like that. So you, you really, it's not necessary to take these apart very often and clean them unless you're one of those people that takes it in the environments, I said. So very, very nice knife, everybody. I really rec I highly recommend this, actually. And I can't wait to see a lot more of the customs that are going to come out because this is a knife that you need a good custom. I've seen some of them already, but I haven't seen any mirror finish blades on them yet. I haven't seen a, you know, there's they have like a, a ray skin or some kind of skin, snake skin and stuff like that that are inlaid in the handles, lizard skin inlaid in the handles, things like that. But a little bit of abalone, I hate that shit. Fucking shittiest shit you could put in a knife right there. Fucking rainbow pride. But customs will come out on these, and I can't wait. It feels really good in the hand. It's the perfect size, so. Hollowgrind.com's got them right now. I know because I just bought mine. I think he's got three left over there. So good luck on your findings, everybody. Peace out.